I've made a bunch of games, and for some reason, a lot of people think that my games are bad, and I don't know what they're talking about. These games are perfect. So to prove them wrong, I signed up to Ludum Dare 53, a game jam where I need to make a game in only three days. Ludum Dare also has a two-day option, but come on, I'm not insane. It is pretty much impossible to make a game in two days, but three days is very possible. So the jams just started, and they've revealed the theme. Theme. Delivery. What the heck? The theme does have one obvious interpretation that I know we're all thinking, so I think I'll just come out and say it. Childbirth. Oh, that's not what you were thinking. Uh, yeah, me neither. I need to come up with another idea. This is the player right here, right? You'd have your like shopping cart of boxes and then you'd have like the different desks along like this, right? And as you go through, you have to throw your packages to each of the people that need them. There's people that walk through the aisle, right? And then if you run into them, they die and explode. After coming up with this amazing new idea, I made a Unity project and added a square that'll be the player. Now, usually the smart thing to do is make a quick prototype of your game just to test the features before you go ahead and create the game's art and commit to an idea. But today, I decided not to do that, and I started by making a background for the game, which is a lot harder than I thought it would be. The issue I'm having is that I've never made a top-down game before, so I'm not really sure how to get the perspective looking right. So I decided to look for some reference images, and I went to the deepest, darkest pits of the internet to find something. And by that, I mean I went to Reddit, the scariest place on the internet. I ended up finding this top-down office artwork by Nico123 Uchichi. Uchihaha. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce that. Anyway, using this image as a reference for the perspective helped me make a pretty good looking background. And yeah, I might have used the image as a little bit of artistic inspiration, but I made sure to change just enough to make it different. And so I won't get sued. At least I hope so. Please don't sue me. Anyway, now that I've got the background art done, it's time for some more art. This is probably a really bad idea. I spent some time working on the Player, and I got it looking pretty good. Okay, so maybe my first attempt didn't work out so good, or my second attempt, or my third attempt, but on the fourth attempt, I actually made something pretty decent. And those of you with good eyesight might have noticed the mail cart the player is pushing. The mail cart will hold the uh, mail the player will need to deliver. I guess that's a little obvious, but there is one problem with the mail cart. It looks a little bit more like a laundry hamper than an actual mail cart. So to try and fix that, I added an envelope on the side, and now the issue is completely fixed, and this definitely does not look like a laundry hamper. With the player now finished, I brought it into the game, and then I made some more art. I'm just kidding. I definitely didn't spend another couple hours making a run animation for the player, because that would be stupid since I haven't even tested my idea yet. Anyway, I've decided that the game will be an infinite runner, which means that you will infinitely move through the game until you inevitably die a horrible, painful death. The main mechanic of an infinite runner is the infinite background, which is why it's called an infinite runner. Again, that might have been obvious. There are two ways you can make this infinite background. You can move the player and keep the background in place, or you can keep the player in place and move the background. And I decided to go with that second option for one major reason. That's how Flappy Bird did it, and that game is a masterpiece, so I might as well stick to what works. Okay, I think I might have done something wrong. So apparently, when you move the background instead of the player, the background will eventually move off of the screen. And I mean, who could have seen that coming? Anyway, after getting the background to repeat, I now finally have a working prototype of the game. And I'm gonna be honest, it's a little boring, but I have come up with a genius plan to fix this problem and make the game fun. I added the ability for the player to move. Yeah, the game is still boring. I think I might need a new plan. My new plan to make the game more fun is to add the package delivery into the game. Because what's more fun than endlessly delivering packages to ungrateful customers? Just ask the hundreds of happy Amazon workers. My first step in the plan is to make the workers. So I started by making a sprite for the worker and I added them into the game. But you might notice one obvious issue. There are no women. That's the only issue I can see. Everything else seems to be functioning perfectly. So I made this sprite for a female worker because I support equality in the workplace. Just thought I should add some representation for the 10% of females watching right now. And now that the workers have been added, step one in my plan to make the game fun is complete. Step two is to add the package that you'll deliver to the workers. The first thing I did was add an alert above the workers that need a package. And then I made a box that you can throw with those workers. And yeah, the box looks pretty ugly, but that doesn't matter because at least it actually works or not. To fix the problem, I added a cooldown to the package throw, and now it actually works. The only problem is that it's still really ugly. So I made a new sprite, but this time I made it slightly 3D, and now it looks great. But updating the package art caused me to relapse, and I started making even more art. So I also updated the background by adding some cubicles, and I added a computer on each of the desks. But then I realized that I'm supposed to be making a package, and updating the background is completely unnecessary, even if it does look a lot better. So now that the package delivery is added, the game is definitely more fun, but right now it's time for me to get some sleep. Tomorrow we'll spend some time testing the game and I'll figure out what I need to do next.
So I've been playing the game and I have found one massive issue. It's way too easy. And by way too easy, I mean there is literally no challenge at all. And you also might remember that my original idea for the game involved a little bit of violence. And then if you run into them, they die and explode, which is also missing from the game. So my plan is to combine these two issues and add exploding workers as the main challenge of the game, which might not really make sense, but trust me, okay? I think I know what I'm doing. I started by making the explosion animation, which was pretty easy. The strategy was just red and more red and more red and more red and more red. I also added this fun little detail where the worker's head will fall onto the chair and stare at you with their sad, cold, dead eyes. I did this so you feel a little remorse for murdering the innocent office workers, but if I'm gonna be honest, it didn't work because I am having too much fun, which is a little problem because you're not actually supposed to kill the workers, but it is really hard not to. To fix the problem, I made a timer that'll count down every second, and every time you kill one of the workers, it decreases, and if you deliver a package, it increases. So unfortunately, now it's a little bit less fun to murder every single person in the office, but I still have the thirst for blood, and occasionally decapitating office workers doesn't satisfy me. I need more. So I made a new walking sprite for the workers, and now I have a new type of worker to murder as they walk through the office, or glide, or whatever this is. I guess I should probably make a walk animation. Now, in my past, I've made some pretty questionable walk animations. The player walk animation for this game looks pretty good, so I'm sure I can make something pretty decent for the workers. What have I created? I mean, it looks all right, but I'm not too worried about the walk animation. What I'm more focused on is the explosion animation, which is pretty similar to the other explosion animation. It's a lot of red and more red and more red and more red. But the main difference with this one is that the worker's head will fall sideways. Just thought I should add a little bit of variation from the red and more red and more red. So now you can decapitate the workers with your packages and vaporize them by ramming them with your mail cart. I think my bloodlust has definitely been satisfied. And the game is also a lot more challenging now since you can't just run through the office. You actually need to pay attention to the timer and avoid massacring the workers, as much as I hate to say that. But it's getting late, so I'm gonna go get some sleep and I should have enough time to finish the game tomorrow. So I have some bad news. I thought I would have enough time to finish the game today, but what I didn't realize is that I need to submit it before one o'clock in the afternoon. So I actually have less than half a day to finish the game. So I should probably get to work. I started the day by working on the intro for the game. And I really had to think about what would motivate you to run through the office and obliterate anyone who gets in your way. After coming up with a few different ideas from aliens to secret government agencies, I finally settled on one. Your boss tells you to, which is definitely the scariest one. I spent some time making a background for the boss's office. Office. I didn't say I spent a lot of time on it. And I also made an animation where the player will walk up to the boss and then just stand there awkwardly. Now, this is where the boss will tell you to deliver your packages. So the next thing I need to do is make a text box. I made a pretty simple text box sprite and I made sure to include the boss's bald head in the corner, which should instantly tell you that he is the boss. Now, most games have this effect where the text will reveal over time, but the problem is I don't know how to do that. But lucky for me, I have the power of stealing other people's code. And with just a few clicks, I now have a working text box and I can make the boss say anything I want. For example, if you don't subscribe right now, I will break into your house and throw packages at your head until you explode. <clears throat> um, actually, he tells you to deliver your packages or else you're fired, which isn't very nice. But I think it accurately sets up why the player is willing to murder dozens of people just to deliver some packages. And now that I finished the intro, I need to make a cutscene for when you run out of time because currently nothing happens. I thought it would be kind of funny if you trip once you run out of time, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But let's be honest, this entire game doesn't make sense. I made an animation of the player tripping that looks all right. Some of the frames are a little questionable, but overall it's not that bad. So now when you run out of time, you'll trip and suffer permanent brain damage from the impact of your head hitting the ground and your boss will come in and fire you if it wasn't bad enough already. And now the game has a complete gameplay loop. You get yelled at by your boss, deliver some packages with the occasional accidental manslaughter and then eventually get fired. And then you get to do it all over again. But the thing I'm the most proud of is the fact that the game has no bugs. Uh, close your eyes. Don't look. Okay, keep them shut. Nothing to see here. I exported the game and then submitted it to the jam. But what I really want to know is what people think about the game. And it's actually pretty positive. Not that I'm surprised or anything. The game got an overall score of 3.5 out of 5, which is pretty much a perfect score. 3.5, 5, I mean, they might as well be the same number. Which means that I have proven myself as the world's best game developer in the world's hardest game jam. And if you thought that was cool, you should check out this video where I make a game for $100,000.